.NET MAUI Preview 5 is here, introducing some stunning and awesome features into the preview, including shell, gradients, app themes, and so much more. So tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James Montemagno and I'm back with another entry in my series looking at every single preview of .NET MAUI that is coming out and .NET 6 Preview 5 just dropped, which means a new preview of .NET MAUI also dropped as well. So I figured today, you know, as the previews have been going, we'll take a look at what's new, what's kind of in the getting started experience and how you can open in Visual Studio 2019. And of course you can do it now in Visual Studio 2022, which is very exciting. Um, and you know, I'm not gonna go too deep into some of the new features, but we're also gonna take a look at some really cool sample applications that have been updated. And you know, let's try some new features, why not? So let's check it out. All right, so the first thing of always that I talk about is check out the amazing blog series that David Ortnow puts out from the PM team. I'm talking about all of the brand new features, some brand new things in here, such as animations, um, the just new unattached uh, for every single element that you can kind of link into to add animations to. They've added new UI components. So activity indicator, checkbox, image, stepper, they're all in here. New renderers, I mean, handlers, I should say. And there's this new thing called use Maui app extension, which is very cool. Oh, and I should also mention that if you actually go right up here, uh, there's actually documentation. Check this out. Boom. Don M. Maui documentation. Boom. Which is so, so cool. So if you're looking to get started with installation, it'll walk you through the whole process right here. I've done it many a times. So it's really, really nice, including migrating apps, app startup. Check this out. If you go in here, you can learn about fonts, handlers, renderers, all that good stuff. Anyways, he does all sorts of good things in here, talking about all of the new controls, how to use app shell for your window, which is really neat. I'm a huge fan of app shell. Check this out. You get actually built in support for flyout, even on Mac OS, which is really nice. All those new different controls that are coming in new single project templates, which we're going to walk through. And of course, Maui check. So let's go ahead and check it out. I'm going to go over here and let's zoom in and just do Maui check. If you haven't installed .NET Maui uh, check, you'll definitely want to do that because it evaluates your entire machine and makes sure everything is up to date with every single new preview. So check it out. Everything's good. I've updated everything because I ran this yesterday. All right. Now, the other thing we're going to do here is let's create a brand new project. So I'm going to CD over into my projects folder. I'm going to do uh, make dir Maui app five P for five preview. And, um, let's do CD there and do dot net new Maui. Now you can also still do not net new Maui blazer that will give you everything you need. Um, but i um, here, I'm just going to create a Maui app. All right, let's go ahead and just boot it up over here. And of course you want to open it in visual studio, 2019, 1611 preview two or you're going to want to open it in Visual Studio 2022 as well, support there too. So the only reason I wanted to create a new project is to walk through what's sort of new in the new project, if you will, uh, which is that there's only two projects now. In the last preview, there's three projects, and that is because there is a new extension that enables single project for WinUI applications. So to actually get this all up and running successfully, there's three things that you need to do. First and foremost is under your NuGet package manager over here. So I go NuGet package manager, package manager settings. You're going to want to make sure that you have the Maui preview selected here, aka.ms slash Maui preview index.json. And then, or add it if it's not there. And then under extensions, there's two extensions that you need to have installed. The first one here is project reunion preview. Previously, it was project reunion. 5.0 0 0.5 now it's point zero point eight dot whatever um, this is brand new so you want to uninstall the old one install the new one this is in the documentation and additionally there is the single project msix packaging tool which also just came out so you can see here that this is a single packaging so you need those two things installed in addition to what i just showed you with the um, other one so if you open up here, the, the main page .xaml, this is going to look exactly the same. Uh, the drop down down here, I can select my Android emulator. 
I can select what device I want to run it on. So here I can go ahead and debug the application, or I could of course run without debugging that will compile up the application on the Android emulator I selected. I have noticed that in debug mode that the, the hot reloading is still seems a little tricky in preview. So, uh, you know, be aware that it's a preview. So you want to definitely check that out um, and make sure that, you know, it's, it's, it's working for you or not working for you. It's still a preview. So, so, you know, be aware of that, uh, which is good. So this will compile up the application. And while it does that, what I want to show you is that over here, there is of course our main XAML page, which is going to be the same. We still have our app XAML CS. I'm pretty sure in the future, um, updates uh, to the templates are going to have app shell on by default as the template. So this is what we see just a new main page. Um, and the biggest thing here is this startup.cs. The new things are this using Maui app and also the configuring fonts. So this is actually really neat. Um, the use Maui app enables you for Android, iOS, macOS, or windows to basically have this Maui application startup so it, it can implement specific things on the platform level. If you need to same thing for iOS, there's an app delegate here. And if we actually go in to this Maui application, we can see that we get different events such as, um, continue user activity, did enter background on activity, will finish perform shortcuts. So you get all that good stuff, but, but this is a specific, you know, startup, um, um, class that is in here. So there's a configure that you can get as well that passes in the app builder. And that app builder is actually really important because if you wanted to use like configure, uh, configure, configure services, this actually enables you to use the built-in dependency injection service of Microsoft.extensions. So a lot of people are asking in my Xamarin Forms dependency injection video, what's going to happen next? Well, it's going to use all of that cool ASP.NET and Blazor hosting model that you've known and love. So you can put that right there. And I'll show you what that looks like with the weather application here in a second. So that's some of the new stuff in this startup, um, which is neat. And of course our application has started and I can click and I can increase the count as I expected there. The real cool part I think is that over here on the WinUI application, I can set that as the startup and hit debug as well. And this will build up my WinUI application and I no longer have to worry about, is it this project? Is it the packaging project? What project is it? It's just this one project that opens up uh, right over here uh, on my Windows machine. So the real benefit of course, is that I'm having a native application that gets updated um, with windows as well. So when windows 11 comes out, you're ready to go. And here's my native windows application that resizes and all that good stuff. So there is a lot that is going on in .NET Maui. So if you go to the GitHub repo and go to this wiki here, you'll find getting started documentation, sample projects, but also the roadmap. And I think the roadmap is, is really awesome because you can see what's added. There's a project board you can follow in real time. There's a status report. I mean, look at, I mean, there's all sorts of good stuff that's going on here. You can follow along in the journey, every step around along the way of every little thing. So the team is very transparent about what's happening. So what we got here are some things like tabbed page shell, native embedding brushes, fly out animations, and coming in the next preview, which I'm super stoked for, and we'll definitely do another video on are all sorts of planned things, corners, content view, deep linking devices, dual frame gestures, indicator views, refresh views, shadows, all sorts of good stuff in here and more shell stuff. Um, so that's why I hope that the next temple will have it. And then we're just in bug fix mode. We're adding, they're adding more stuff in there and, um, getting ready for that GA release in November, which we're super stoked for, um, which is really, really rad. So at this point, you know, we've taken a look at what's new in the projects, how to get up and running with Maui check. But what I want to show you next is that weather application and how we can modify and use some of these new features, uh, and get it up and running, uh, on our, on our actual Android device and our windows device as well. Um, so let's hop back over and talk about that because it has some of those new features built right in and we can do a lot more. All right, check this out. This is the startup.cs of that weather application. And this is what I was talking about here. Notice in configure services underneath that use Maui app, 
here you can actually go ahead and register your interfaces to tap in native functionality, or maybe you have a weather service or you have some other just abstraction with an interface. You can go ahead and register those services. And since this project is multi-targeted, we see in the drop down here, if I was to light up Mac Catalyst, that lights up for that specific platform. So you may be wondering, do I need to hop into the Android, iOS, or Mac, or Windows projects? Actually, you don't. You can just conditionally compile it all right here if you need to tap into native sort of integrations there. So kind of be aware of that, that that's actually a really, really neat concept. Now, let me go ahead and bring up the applications here. Um, and of course, I could run this on iOS and also on Mac OS too, but you can see it's a really cool application over here on windows. We have this little wind speed generator thing going on and it is beautiful. This is the same app there, but they added some new things here, which is the ability to do these animations for your favorites. And that works across the different devices automatically. So we go back to, to this here, look at fade right in for those favorites because animations were added in this preview. So if we look at our favorites page down on that frame. So every single frame there, there is a method called attached handler because you don't know how many favorites you're going to have, but you want to kind of create a list of these to apply animations to. So if you look at the code behind what David did here was every single time a frame is attached, he adds it to a collection and he simply loops through them when the page is presented and then fades to. So he starts at zero and it goes to one right automatically. So if you look here, the opacity is set to zero and he fades them in every single time this page is appearing. Boom. You can do that. You could also just when you add a new one, fade it in. So if you add another favorite, you could see it there too. So there's, there's multiple ways now of adding those favorites in your UI, which is really cool. Now I want to show another feature that I think is really neat, which is I could come to the top and actually add some linear gradients. Actually, I could add linear gradients on anything. So if I wanted to add a linear gradient here on this background of the content page, I could go ahead and do that. So here's a start point and an end point, yellow to green, actually grab that from the documentation here. Cause it's the same, right? Here's the this, this same stuff here. Uh, I think I could actually apply this to the frame. If I just take this, um, let's find a, uh, we'll just change the colors here. Let's, let's take this one. If I was to go down into this frame, look that there is a, a background color. But if I was just applied this and let's just say, uh, purple to orange, let's just make that and delete this background color. We can just start applying gradients pretty much nonstop in this application for the background and for the frames. And we're going to have these great linear brushes. And the other thing that's cool too, is that there's also a uh, radial brushes that you can apply on here. So pretty much any gradient different stops, anything that you want, you can create these great effects because they're now in this preview, as you'd expect, as you're going to upgrade, you know, your Xamarin forms apps over to .NET Maui. All right, let's see if the application is up and running. If I toggle over, look at that beautiful. Now this is some stunning user interface. If I say so myself with beautiful linear gradient brushes. <laughs> and of course you could you know, implement hot reload and you can see this all working in your application. And this is pretty much how I want all my applications to look lots and lots of gradients everywhere. All right. That was a pretty quick overview of what is new in preview five of .NET Maui and of course .NET six, which I'm super excited about launching this November. Of course, you know, if you're looking at .NET Maui, what you're going to want to do is, you know, it is your new multi uh, platform, uh, multi-app user interface, um, to build iOS, iPad OS, Android, windows, and Mac OS. It is the evolution of Xamarin forms. Of course, your apps will upgrade seamlessly and you can reuse all of your existing .NET logic. You can blend in blazer web views into your application, which is really cool. And I showed that in the last video that I'll link to, um, I'm super excited about everything that's happening. The team's doing a spectacular job. Uh, I'm really excited for it. And there's a lot of buzz in the community about it. I cannot wait until November when we hit GA or even just RC and I start upgrading all my applications. I love the new tooling with hot reload. Anyways, I hope you really enjoyed this and you will give .NET Maui a sneak peek, even just playing around with .NET new. Um, definitely give it a, a look. If you have any questions, leave them in the show notes below. And of course, don't forget to like this video. If you do uh, like it, um, because that goes into the Google algorithm of YouTube goodness and recommends it to other folks, helps the channel out a lot. 
So honestly, just a little like there, just jam on it. I mean, you only have to hit it once, but it would really mean the world to me. Don't forget that I also stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash James Montemagno. I have a newsletter, newsletter.montemagno.com that I put out every single Saturday, kind of just updates on my life, what's going on. So if you're interested in subscribing, it's completely free. It's short and it's kind of like drinking a cup of coffee with me every single Saturday. Again, I hope you enjoy this video. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't yet, and ding that notification bell so you get updates whenever I put out new videos. Let me know what you want to see here on the channel. Thank you so much.